So um, thank the chair for the introduction. So let's go to the topic directly. Dynamic networks, by definition, is a network whose structure is changing across time. So at any time step, the nodes and links can be added or removed. And this type of data is quite common in many, many application domains, such as social network, email network, and device communication network. And for this talk, let's just consider academic collaboration network, co-authorship network. So in co-authorship network, the nodes are uh, authors, and the links indicate the publications between the two authors. And this kind of network is also dynamic, changing year by year. So imagine that you have a dynamic network like this, um, a co-authorship network, and which could be fairly large. Instead of looking at the whole network as the entire thing, another type of analysis is called egocentric analysis, which essentially focus on a particular sub-network that is centered at a particular actor. For example, could be me. So in my causal uh, network, in my ego network, it may contain my co-authors, and may contain my co-authors' co-authors, and me is called the ego, that's why it's called ego network, and co-authors, my co-authors are called authors. As the whole network changes across time, so does the ego network. So there, there exists many approach on realizing dynamic network in the literature. Uh, the most basic approach is to using uh, a small multiple of uh, no link diagrams, and there's an animation-based approach, and you can also realize the dynamic network as a series uh, matrices. You can also use projection to reduce the whole network into a single data point. And there was a fantastic talk about, uh, uh, which I didn't include here, is happening this morning about using, uh, realizing dynamic networks using comics. So, those approaches, they have their own limitations, such as those uh, at least on the slides. Um, and most importantly, uh, most of the work are focusing on the whole network analysis, tracking the changes of the entire network, whereas egocentric analysis are focused on the micro level, more on the nuances between the ego and specific authors. So we can ask many questions about dynamic ego networks. For example, in co-authorship network, I might wonder, when does my co-author join or leave or rejoin my network? And how does he connect it to me? Is it a direct connection or not? And my co-authors may form different clusters, communities. What is the temporal dynamics of that? And what is the stability of my uh, co-authorship network? Is the turnover rate high or low? To address those questions using uh, realizations, I got some inspiration from the subway maps or transit maps like this. And the particular viral metaphor we are using here is lines, stops, and zones. And I'm going to introduce in just a second. So as I mentioned, uh, in our ego lines realization, we realize each order as a line just like the subway lines, and the, uh, it tra you are traveling across time. And the starting and ending of the line indicating uh, you, uh, the joining and leaving uh, of this specific uh, network. And we place the focal order uh, in the middle, which is the ego. And we also develop a packing algorithms to lay out the um, uh, order lines around this focal order. And we try to minimize the line crossings and keep the line straight as possible and make it look elegant. If you don't um, pack those other lines together, you may end up with a larger uh, realization such like this. And certain others may leave the network then rejoin, so we indicate the missing years as a dash line. And if the order leaves the network and network comes back, we just terminate the line. It's like the subway uh, line terminated. And we uh, represent connections uh, using those kind of white dots. It's based, matrix, it's based on matrix representations. For example, MB and JF is connected here. We use a white dot here. And those white dots in the subway metaphor is just like the stops on the line. And we are using color to indicate the color clusters. And the cluster is based on how close to, uh, the authors work together. For example, this, uh, the year in the middle. 
and we are using these, this grid contour to separate the first level co-authors and the second level co-authors. Um, it's just like the zones in, in subway maps. And now I'm going to show you a uh, demo of our system. All right, cool. So this is a full interface of the Ecoline system. And here you see an overview of the entire system, uh, uh, sorry, the entire uh, network aggregated across time. And here is a, a table review showing each of the extracted eco network in the network. And those histograms are indicating uh, certain variables changing across time. For example, the uh, node number, uh, uh, links number, and so on. And the data set I'm using here is co-authorship networks based on the publications at CHI and HBEVs conferences during the past 25 years. And for this demo, let's explore one of the CHI Academy Award winner this year, Dr. John Stasko's Eagle Network. Let me enlarge the window a little bit. All right. So um, as you can see that uh, uh, John Stasko has a very long public history. I need to zoom out to see uh, all of the, his papers. And, I, 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 and also, this is not a, all the data sets, only was, uh, sorry, it's only Kai and Infraviz was papers. It's not all of the papers. And you can see that um, if you look at the size of the, the block, there are bigger ones and smaller ones, meaning that the size of the ego network, his ego network, uh, goes up and down. And remember that this is the, uh, his ego network that contains both of his direct co-authors and also his co-authors co-authors. So you might wonder what is the size trends of his direct co-authors only? So kind of using this uh, kind of zone tool I mentioned um, at the beginning. And so all his direct co-authors is highlighted in this uh, gray zone. And if you zoom out again, uh, you can see that uh, actually um, um, his first level ego network uh, size does not change that, that much. It's stabler. And it seems that um, this year, this big block here, actually it's 2003, is the first year that um, um, John Stasko's ego network grows a lot, quite a bit. And a lot of people are from uh, actually outside his immediate cycle, uh, circle uh, of this uh, ego network, and a lot of people are from these red clusters. Um, and if you hold on order, you can see there's uh, black lines indicating how he is connected to John Stasko. For example, here, uh, Dr. Uh, Nicholas Russell is connected to Stasko through CP here. And if you hold on other uh, orders in the red cluster, it seems that they all connected to stats code through CP. So who is it? <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> so uh, that's Dr. Uh, Kathleen Prezong. Um, so we observe a lot of traffic uh, uh, going through um, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Kathleen Prezong connecting to John Stasko in his ego network. So it seems that she is a central hub. So is that true? We can verify it by changing the color mapping from clusters to betweenness. And you can see that um, uh, John Stasko and Castor Present are two of the central hubs in the Seagull network. Well, it's John Stasko's Eagle network, of course, he is the central hub. And in this particular year, Castor Present is also the central hub. Let's go back to clusters and keep browsing. And 2007 is also an interesting year because John Stasko's first level ego network grows quite a lot. If you look at those lines in the gray zones, right? And you might wonder, what are those people working on? You can hold over on particular um, uh, dots. To, so the, the title of the paper is shown uh, below. And because many people may work on uh, more than one paper in a year. So it's a weighted graph, actually. So you can show the address by using this. And you can observe a couple black dots over there, so meaning that m those people working on more than one papers in that year. And you can hover over on it. And those are 
it's all about uh, the famous jigsaw system, which uh, fundamental contribution to the system, uh, to our community. And we keep browsing and found that 2008 also interesting because uh, the size of things changed uh, a lot uh, compared to 2007. Uh, there are many clusters, many colors. You might wonder what do those clusters mean? You can sort those uh, lines by their clusters. So you can see there is a community here and community here. And uh, if you browse those orders, you see Dr. Bongshun Li and Dr. Daniel Fisher. Those people are from MSR. And because the clustering is based on how close people work together in that year, so it might, uh, in some sense, it reflect the organizational information. So I suspect that those uh, purple cluster are the um, MSR contingent. Another uh, insight you might have is uh, in John Stasko's Eagle Network, there's many lines, and they are uh, like very short, meaning that the turnover rate of the network is high. And how high is it? We can uh, adjust the uh, uh, slider. So here I'm only showing uh, people that have more than three years of uh, a relationship with John Stasco. So you see that this dynamic, uh, this realization, uh, size of the realization decreases uh, dramatically, meaning that the turnover rate is high. And you can also review this gray zone tool and observe that most of people are uh, Stasco's direct coders. That makes sense because people who have direct relationship may work for longer uh, time. And there's one exception, uh, interesting uh, fact here is uh, Dr. Bong Shen Li. Uh, so she works strong, uh, worked with John Stasco in 2008 and then leave the network in 2009 and then rejoin the network in 2010 as a secondary coder. And then she connected to John Stasco through uh, Dr. Zhi Cheng Liu here. And I believe that corresponds to the fact that Zhi uh, Cheng did uh, internship at uh, MSR around that time. All right, so that's the uh, demo. Let's go back to the slides. Go back to the slides again. <laughs> All right, thank God. Um, so to evaluate you guys, we uh, did a control user study and we uh, designed 13 tasks, include temporal analysis and topological analysis. And we compare ego lines with two other techniques using the academic authorship network as a testing data. And the two other techniques we compared to, one is the small multiples of the no-link diagrams, uh, and which is the basic approach, the baseline. And the other technique we compared to is, called, we call it no-links. It, it used the eagle lines as the lay, uh, layout algorithm, but it shows the connection as links. And the detailed discussion is in the paper, and now I'm going to show you the main takeaway of our study. So OR, eagle lines perform the best. For temporal analysis, Eagle Lines was on par with no links in terms of time, but more accurate. And small multiple was the, uh, the worst. And for uh, topological analysis, uh, Eagle Lines performed the best for both time and accuracy. Small multiple was uh, faster than no link, but they have similar uh, accuracy. And there's one exception is that for finding bridges tasks, um, small multiple was the best and eagle lines were the worst. Um, that might be because um, the bridge concept in matrix representations is a little bit too difficult to uh, comprehend. In addition, we also did a domain expert evaluation uh, with an expert uh, through interview sessions and the, the expert is a management school uh, professor who interested in organizational networks analysis. And during the interviews, uh, he explored email communications from a company. We developed a comprehensive uh, scenarios from, the, uh, uh, from this, those studies and for 
uh, details, please, I encourage to read, you to read the paper. And in the future, we'd like to address some of the limitations of, uh, of the current Eagle Line system. So uh, the first of all, we want to do a more effective overview because right now it's, the, uh, it's uh, basic and we want to reduce the viral clusters. And we also want to handle larger eagle, eagle networks by in, incorporating some kind of like a multi-scale aggregation uh, techniques such as you can expand or collapse the lines and so on. And we'll, we'd like also to do the experiments uh, on other data sites in other applications and most importantly, to figure out what can we do to, to make the bridge funding uh, tasks more effectively with Ecolines. And with that, I, I'd like to thank all my co-authors and thanks for your attention and take any questions you have. Should I bend or should I mess it up? Okay, I decided to mess it up. Um, so I'm uh, Drashko from Columbia University. <coughs> I have a, a bit of philosophical question here. Um, why are you saying that you're using the metaphors of subway? Um, the question here is, um, let's say, key, two characteristics of a subway is that it's covering a 2D space, which means the vertical has also some kind of a meaning. Uh, and also another thing is, um, you know, what is a, a stop and where can I see switching between stops here, right? You know, mm -hmm. sh was it necessary to say it's a subway metaphor or it could be just lines and dots and not even mentioning that? Like, what's the reason behind it? That's a great question. So, um, for sure, th this is not a subway map, <laughs> but we are leveraging some of the visual elements from the subway and inspired by the subway and all public transit maps. And with the particular elements that we are using here is zones, lines, and stops. And, and uh, the, white, the white dots, is, it looks similar to subway, but it's not exactly a subway line. And you can imagine that if you are older, you're traveling across time and you encounter several stops, those white dots. And that is the collaboration happening with other co-authors. So in that case, actually, it's, it represents kind of some kind of events. And another interesting insight uh, during our study is that we found using the subway metaphor is, uh, to, uh, is easier to um, explain the realization to novice users. And, and they, they don't know, I mean, the agency matrices is fairly complicated, uh, I mean, uh, for novice uh, users who, who don't understand realization or not, uh, not in computer science or not in math, they don't know agency matrices. But if we talk in a different way using this kind of subway metaphor and this kind of language, they, they get the realization quite easily. This is a one of the um, reasons. I think you got one of the dots wrong in 2001. <laughs> I noticed that it wasn't right. So. I, I downloaded the data set from your website. Uh, okay. <laughs> I, I, I actually did have a question, though. Uh, <laughs> the vertical positioning of particular people, what's the algorithm? And is how sensitive is the view to changes there? And so? Uh, that's a great question. So we, um, so we, it's a it's a greedy algorithm, and so we first um, we sort those lines by their uh, starting time and also the length, and then we place the ego uh, in the in the middle, and then we balance the the lines above and and below, um, based on their total length above and below the the ego. And and so and we are using uh, this kind of grid algorithm to place those lines by that particular order, and it, that's inspired by um, one of the old papers that using the inside out uh, heuristic to place those lines. And I would say it uh, it's not the optimal approach because it does introduce uh, some kind of uh, line crossings in some some time, and especially if you. Uh, using uh, introducing zones and the first level order need to be into the center, uh, so it's a it's a limitation. Thank you.